In this video, I'm going to be looking at making another steampunk mask. Now, you may have seen on my channel some previous videos that I've done covering making various masks uh, in the past. However, the Asylum Steampunk Festival is coming up later in the year, and I wanted to get a head start in making a new one. My previous mask was based upon the uh, character Cronin from the Hellboy series, and I wanted to continue that theme, so I really like the look of that. My previous mask was sort of based on it, but it didn't entirely look like it. I want to do something a little bit closer to this design, so I'm going to have another go. As you can see, I'm wearing a chrome face mask, and the reason I've got this is because I want my mask to have a nice smooth front. And as you can see, this mask has got quite a nice curve to it. So I thought I could use this as the basis for a mask. Now, I'm not going to be retaining the chrome finish to it, but I do want the shape. So I figured I could use this as the basis for a mask and add bits to it. I've put together a rough sketch to attempt to visualize how the mask will look. So these two pipes that are coming out the front of the mouthpiece are actually going to attach to fans on the back of the mask. My previous mask had some air extraction uh, fans basically which would suck out the air from the mask and that would pull air from the back through which created quite a nice uh, ventilation effect. So I want to mimic that here but instead of having it as a separate backpack I'm going to actually incorporate these into the back of the mask. So what I've done is to take the mask and mark on where my eyes should be and that's so I can position the lenses correctly. I've also backed the mask with some fiberglass. The actual masks when you buy them are quite flimsy so I needed something a bit stronger than that so I've put a layer of fiberglass on the inside to give it a bit of strength. Now these things popped up on Amazon just randomly while I was looking for some electronic components. They're NeoPixel rings and they're controlled by an Arduino, so it's basically 16 LEDs um, in sequence. And as you can see, you can get some really nice lighting effects with these. So what I want to do is incorporate these into the eyes of the mask. So what I need to do is make a custom lens holder that will allow me to put a lens in place, but also leave space for this NeoPixel ring. So I'm using the lathe to create that piece and I'm cutting down some acetyl to the correct size. So this is how it's going to work. There's going to be an interior lens which will be dark so people can't actually see my eyes. Then the NeoPixel ring will sit in front of that and finally there will be an outside lens to um, hold it all in place. I think the outside one will probably be clear so that the colours of the NeoPixel are distorted but for the time being I'm just using the green one to demonstrate. So what I need to do now is I need two lens holders and obviously I've only got one prototype so I'm going to make a mould of that and cast up two pieces. What I've also got is this round piece which will sit over my ear. I need two of those as well so I'm going to make a mould of that as well. I just use half a pint glass for the eye piece. For the ear piece I need something a little bit bigger so I'm just using some foam board to create an enclosure. I didn't have a hot glue gun at the time so when I did the uh, eyepiece the mould actually leaked so I'm being extra careful here to make sure that this enclosure is airtight. So the way I'm doing that is just to cover all of the joins with plenty of glue to make sure that nothing can leak out. So I'm just mixing up some silicon here and what I need to do is to degas the silicon. I've mentioned in previous videos that when you mix up the silicon you can introduce air into the rubber and that can cause a distorted mould. So what the vacuum chamber here does is just to suck out the air from the rubber and when it does so you'll see that the silicon foams up as the air is pulled out. What I actually did for my second batch is to divide the silicon into two cups because it increases its size so much it can sometimes overflow the container so you've got to be a little bit careful with that. Once the air is all sucked out though you should see that the silicon sort of goes a slightly demonic um, as I call it and then it just collapses back down again so once it does that you know that the air has been fully evacuated. So now that I have my fully degassed silicon I can pour that into the mould. Now I could just leave this but what I'm actually going to do is to put the moulds back in the vacuum chamber and just pull out any excess air. Sometimes when you pour the silicon onto your piece air can get trapped on the surface or in any undercuts, things like that. So in order to get a perfect mould I always tend to put it back in the vacuum chamber, if the mould will fit of course, and pull out the excess air. And as you can see here there's still air coming out of this so it's quite surprising how much air actually gets trapped in the silicon. So 
So what I now need to do is cast up some copies. So because I'm going to be incorporating these pieces into the final mask, and I'm then planning to make a master mold of the entire mask, I need to make sure these pieces are perfect. They'll basically be second generation copies once it's all said and done. So that could potentially introduce a little bit of distortion, things like that. And particularly for the eyepiece, because that's got to be quite precise to fit the various components. I want to make sure that doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do is to pressure cast these pieces. I've managed to find some polyurethane resin, which is actually quite reasonably priced. Um, it's from a company called DWR Plastics. Um, I'll put a link in the description. And this stuff's a lot less viscous than the uh, polyester resin that I'm used to using. So I'm not entirely sure that pressure casting these pieces is entirely necessary. But as mentioned, I want to make sure they're as perfect as possible. So I'm going to go ahead anyway with this. I think if these were more complicated molds of figures and sculptures, things like that, then pressure casting probably would be necessary. But for simple geometric shapes, it's a bit less so. Nevertheless, I just want to make sure they're as good as they can be. That's one problem with uh, pressure casting. Of course, you've got to deal with a compressor, which is really, really loud. What I'm doing is to compress the chamber to 60 PSI. As the compressor pumps air into the chamber, its own internal reservoir is depleted, so the motor turns on to bring the uh, compressor's chamber back up to pressure. What we should see here is that once it reaches the cutoff point, the engine stops. So I've now left that to set for about 20 minutes or so, and I'm just putting them out of the mold. There's my masterpiece and the cast piece side by side, and they're both looking pretty good, I think. So the next step now is to take all of these pieces and combine them together. Now I need to embed the eye pieces into the mask. I don't want them sticking out quite so far. The same thing for the sort of gas mask thing by the mouth. So I've measured out exactly where the eye should be, so now the um, slightly worrying part is cutting a large hole in the front of the mask. So there we go. Now the bit I used here wasn't actually quite wide enough, so I'm now going to wind these out slightly further using a Dremel. So there we go. Now I was worrying they looked a little bit too big perhaps. Uh, the larger the eyes, the sort of the friendlier it sort of looks. But I think once I've got everything else on there, um, it shouldn't look too bad. Now what I really need to do this is a cast of my head. So what I'm doing is to wrap my head with cling film so I don't get covered in gunk. And then I'm going to use some plaster bandage to make a rough mold of my head. I don't need the detail or anything like that, I just need the dimensions so I can make sure the mask will actually fit me when it's done. Now I was going to ask my fiance to give me a hand with this, but um, she was at work and I just thought I just need to get on with it. So I decided to do it myself. So all I need to do now is to take the two halves of the mold, put them together, pour some plaster in, and away we go. Um, so not the most straightforward thing I suppose you might think, but I have done this before and as long as you leave your eyes clear you can sort of see what you're doing uh, and obviously you need to leave yourself room to breathe as well. So there's my mask sitting on the cast and what I've actually done is to drill through the cast and put a piece of threaded rod through. This means that the ear pieces that are going to sit over the ears are perfectly in alignment with each other. So I need now just to carefully position the mask to make sure that everything's in alignment. As you can see, I've drawn some marks on the bus just to indicate where the mask should sit. So the next thing to do is actually to extend the back of the mask out. I need it to cover my whole head, uh, leaving the back free. So what I'm doing is to build up the mask using some foam. This is a technique that I used for my previous steampunk mask, uh, and it worked pretty well I thought, so I'm doing it again. So what I'm doing is making the basic form out of foam, and then I'm going to give it a layer of fiberglass, and then use some car body filler, otherwise known as Bondo in most places, um, to do the final shape. What I'm doing here is actually to super glue the edge of the foam to some plastic that I've wrapped around the ear pieces. I need a clean smooth line around those round pieces because I want the mask to sit flush to them. Now at this stage I'm being very careful to make sure everything's in alignment because once everything's covered in fiberglass and bondo it's going to be very very difficult for me to start repositioning things. 
So I'm ready to do my fiberglass. So I'm just mixing up some polyester resin and some catalyst and mixing that together. And with this, it's just a case of slowly adding bits of uh, glass fiber mesh together and laminating them in with the resin. Once this is set, it will be nice and rigid and that will give me a good basis to start adding my Bondo. So this is the stuff, uh, the brand I'm using is called Isopon, but it's pretty much called Bondo everywhere I've seen online. And it's basically the same stuff, it's a paste that you add catalyst to. Uh, once you've mixed it up, you've got maybe three or four minutes to paste it on before it starts going hard. So I'm really approaching this like a sculpture to be honest, I mean I've got the basic shape with the foam, I've added the five glass to give it some structural strength, and now I'm effectively just sculpting the mask with the Bondo. One thing I decided while I was doing this is that I didn't want such a gentle curve going from the face up to the head. I thought it looked a little bit too alien-esque somehow, and maybe like uh, one of the Eldar masks from Warhammer 40,000 or something like that. If you look at the original mask from Hellboy, it's got much less smooth an angle on the forehead. So what I'm doing here is adding an additional piece of foam and adding more fiberglass to that to try and mimic that angle. So now that I've got my rough shape in Bondo, it's now a process of endlessly sanding, refilling and sanding again. Having a hand sander with a vacuum attachment on the back is a bit of a lifesaver here. Um, if you don't have the vacuum attachment, you end up covered in dust, which, you know, fine if you're fine with that, but it can get a bit much after a while. The good thing about Bondo though is it's very easy to sand and you can get a very, very smooth finish with it, so it's great stuff for that. So now that I've had a pass of sanding on this and got it relatively smooth, I'm now filling in some gaps so with some more Bondo and then having another pass of sanding. So as you can see, that's actually looking pretty smooth. Um, it can be a bit difficult though to see where the indentations and the areas that you need to pay attention to are. So a way to make those clearer I've found is to give it a layer of gray primer. That way the indentations and the areas that aren't quite smooth enough will stand out a little bit easier. As you can see now I've given it a layer of primer, um, I can clearly see some areas which need a bit of attention. So from this point on it's simply the case of filling the gaps and then resanding. So now that I've got that more or less in the position that I want, I'm now turning my attention to the lower part of the mask. So what I'm doing here is using a piece of foam that I've cut out to draw a line on the side of the mask. This is going to be where the top half of the mask and the bottom half of the mask meet. So I'm just cutting out those shapes using a Dremel. So hopefully you can see that's how the uh, front of the mask is going to look. And I'm just doing the same thing for the other side as well. So what I've done is to wrap some plastic around this sort of gas mask thing and I'm going to glue this to the bottom of the mask. What the curved plastic is going to do is to allow me to have a nice flat edge to the bottom half of the mask so that when it meets the other part of the mask there will be a nice neat line. So just need a bit of an activator on that to make the super glue kick. So that now comes out and what I'll eventually do is actually trim that plastic down so it's just the top edge that remains. So as you can see I've put some additional pieces of plastic on the edge there just so that I have a nice smooth edge to the bottom half of the mask. So from this point on really it's just a case of using the same process that I've previously used to build the other half of the mask. So what I'm doing is to use those pieces of foam that you previously saw to create the basic shape. Here you can see that I've added some fiberglass to give it some structural strength and I'm then going to come in with some Bondo to get the final shape. So there we go, there's the basic shape of the mask. This is as far as I'm going to take it for this part of the video. In the next part of the video I'm going to be making moulds of all of these elements, then I'm going to roto cast up a copy of the mask, and then I'll finally be adding some additional elements like sort of steampunk gadgets and gizmos, things like that, to finally produce the final version of the mask. But for the time being, that's it for me, so thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.
thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting more videos on this project and others, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.